my name is Paul Jack. I'm co-owner of Speakeasy Art Gallery, uh, along with my business partner, Michael Paquette. Before opening the gallery, uh, I started curating shows at alternate venues. Uh, I was working with a promoter, and he let me put up some work that, uh, you know, that I wanted to show while bands were playing and things like that. And, uh, you know, from there, then I met Mike, and Mike I was actually in one of those shows, and then he saw this space, and uh, we decided to go for it and kind of show this style of artwork that we like. I mean, that's what the kind of speakeasy is about. It's one about being comfortable, the idea of speaking easy, and then, you know, the underground feel to the artwork that we were showing. And also, at the time, when I was doing it in bars and stuff, the actual locations were for show. Industrial Evolution came about um, in a lot of ways. Um, just from the different artists that I was inspired by that we have, that we've come across in the past two years. Um, and we thought it would be a really interesting thing uh, to incorporate those artists into one show who use materials that were non-traditional. Um, one artist that really influenced me that we show, we've had shown in the past was Nishi from Japan. Uh, his stuff was really, really cool, and I liked that he did his work on wood. And being a printmaker, I, I thought that would be really cool to kind of go away from paper and canvas and to, to actually work on different surfaces and it would just make the work a little more interesting. I started seeing other artists kind of working in this way, incorporating these found objects and these alternate things, um, these alternate processes of working, which I found really, really interesting and, and exciting. I've been showing for about, uh, probably about 10 years. I graduated art school in 98 and uh, been been showing pretty consistently. Uh, since then and we've been we've had the gallery open for about two years now. I always liked art that was just non-traditional that didn't wasn't the norm um, so you know as a printmaker I wanted to move away from paper and as a painter I wanted to move away from canvas uh, I just wanted something that was a little more exciting and uh, also organic you know I, I like the idea of working on, on woods and carving into woods and uh, you know changing the colors of it and, and just manipulating it and then incorporating stuff that like found materials you know I, I use sawdust from uh, from you know stuff that I've carved out and incorporate that into the work now and uh, you know I, I really enjoy that I, I think it, it has a much more interesting feel and like I said more of an organic feel to it. My process for the work that's going to be in this show uh, starts with this kind of style which is what I was doing before what I'm doing now and I kind of called this the doodle series and I just felt that for a lot of people their first impulse in, in art, in drawing, in life in general, you know, you put a drawing implement in somebody's hand and their first reaction is to scribble, you know? So I always thought it was kind of neat when, when you kind of looked up at a cloud and you could see something inside that. So I kind of took that scribble and, and tried to construct it, you know, see what I could find in there, see if I could find something interesting and, and pull it out and make it more visible. Um, and then my newer work, it's, it's kind of getting even, even more abstracted and not, you know, finding those textures in the materials themselves. I use a lot of chipboard and, you know, start carving and finding shapes in there and, and pulling it out, but being a little more abstract, maybe uh, showing some form, but not really, you know, like a figure or a face or anything like that, just working in a little more of an abstract way. You know, I mean, for me, I am so excited about this show. This is probably, you know, the show I've been wanting to do for, uh, you know, for the two years that we've been open. So I'm really excited about the artists who are in it. And uh, it's an honor for me as a curator to work with them and as an artist to show alongside them. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. And I mean, we had to be open for the two years that we were open to find all these artists and meet all these artists so that this show could happen. So. For me, it's incredibly exciting and I hope people come and, and check it out and, and enjoy it as much as I do. Uh, my name is Dan Fenelon and I'm a local New Jersey artist and I've been exhibiting my work for about 25 years. I'm really into tribal art and um, I want to um, you know, create something that's kind of like what I call modern tribal art, you know, 
So I thought a way of doing that would be to incorporate like everyday objects into my work and um, something that you would see like, you know, toys, which I do a lot of, um, but then to kind of give them a tribal element or a tribal life to them to turn them into these kind of like urban kachina dolls that I do, you know. Uh, so it was like the fusion of modern and tribal together, you know, and I thought that would be a good um, way to do that by using like ordinary everyday materials. Well, what's happened is, you know, I, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of getting a little tired of my own work, you know, and, um, you know, I have like kind of an audience of people who know me and know what I do, um, and, uh, you know, I've had a, the past couple of shows, you know, you do shows and sometimes you got to slip in the same work into several shows, you know, and um, you're showing at different galleries, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, I just decided <clears throat> this time I really want to do something that's completely different than people have seen before. So one of the elements I really pulled out of my old work was I didn't do much color in the new work. You know, it's like very monochromatic, you know. Um, and then I really started to um, get more influenced by the found object thing. It's wonderful and frustrating in the same sentence, you know. It's like, like oh, I'm doing the same old thing and it's just becoming rote and it's like I'm not, I don't feel it in my heart anymore. Then you do something new and it's <clears throat> it's frustrating because it's not as good as your old stuff and you have to experiment and you have to force yourself to change and and then you get to a place where it is becoming something you know and then it's wonderful again you know and, and that's uh, that feeling of up and down up and down you know like you have to you have to challenge yourself you know that's the only way you can grow as an artist you know but it's frustrating as hell to challenge yourself uh, my name is Chris Mays, and I've been showing my work for uh, about two years now, um, ever since I graduated from Salve Regina University. I use the materials that I do uh, because the porcelain I find is very fluid uh, when I'm sculpting my pieces, and it adds a level of permanence that I really find alluring. Um, I like to use the metal because it uh, in some ways decides what the porcelain form is ultimately going to be in the end and I find it challenging to uh, sort of take these various hunks of metal and sort of breathe new life into them um, by sculpting these these porcelain figures. My process is very intuitive uh, when I'm sculpting these works uh, like I said I like to uh, find the metal uh, and sort of let that determine the form that eventually comes out. Um, I very rarely work from a sketchbook. Um, I usually will do sketches halfway through or after. I find that sort of working intuitively will not limit me. I feel like once it's down on paper uh, it very much keeps the idea confined and I like it to be ever-changing because once I get halfway into something I want to be able to completely evolve it. The work for this show is uh, I guess the, the next step in, in the evolution of what I want to ultimately do, um, I feel that uh, my work has evolved in uh, both fluidity and form. I, I, I think that um, my, my technical ability has improved from the first uh, series of these works that I've done. Um, as far as the sculpting goes, my familiarity with the porcelain has, has grown quite a bit. Um, and I also want to experiment more with surface, uh, texture, uh, different glaze treatments, things like that. Uh, one of my major influences is uh, Auguste Rodin because of his uh, ability to capture so much power and emotion in his forms through the exaggeration of form. And that's really what I'm after is to sort of capture this uh, really powerful sort of effigy uh, kind of thing. Something I look to uh, Mark Rothko and his manifesto for, which is, you know, feelings of doom and, you know, power and, you know, sadness, whatever. Just, you know, overarching um, human emotions that are very powerful and I try to encapsulate that in my work. And really what I look to is um, a lot of human um, I guess uh, mental mires, social hang-ups, things like that, different psychoses that people have that, um, you know, ultimately either inhibit them or improve them in some way. Um, it doesn't always necessarily have to be something dark, but I kind of like that 
idea of riding the line between um, like a dark and gruesome and just sort of like this beautiful, um, you know, very fluid deity sort of form. And I think that that's really what I try to uh, encompass in all of my work is that. Uh, my name is Jenny Lombardi and I've exhibited probably for the past two and a half years, two years. Um, in school and now outside of school. I'm drawn to the materials that I use actually on kind of a fluke because I was a painting major and then I decided to take a ceramics course and through that just playing with clay I was able to get exactly what I use in my paintings. I was able to actually sculpt my 2D figures in the three-dimensional realm. So through that I just started experimenting with more and more styles I guess and details and trying to make them as grotesque or just abstracted as possible, so I pretty much just went outside of my box and became a ceramicist instead of a painter. The process I use for each piece is I actually do keep a sketchbook, but usually my sketchbook ideas are just for fun. They're not at all with the, the premise of actually sculpting. If I like the sketch enough, I'll actually attack it with clay and I will, depending on the size of the piece that I decide to do, I will either sculpt it in multiple pieces or just do one. I'll fire it, and once it's been fired twice, then I'll start assembling it. And with bigger ones like this one, I'll have the head or the legs separate, and then I'll glue them together with epoxy, then bondo it, then fiberglass it, and I'll actually sculpt with the bondo and the fiberglass in order to get the form that I want, and I'll actually add extra details. And then eventually, I will paint them with acrylic paint. I've always been kind of drawn to like the weird and abstract and the bizarre. I really like uh, Alex Party's work. He's a younger artist. And Beth Pounder Stitcher is actually a sculptor that I really like because she does these really detailed expressive rabbits and other animal forms with human quality and that's actually what I exhibit in my work is human emotion, whether it's anger, or sadness, or happiness, so I'll just go with that. Uh, my name is Paul Gordon and this is actually my first exhibit. I grew up surrounded by a, a shop fitting workshop of my father so I had carte blanche to use uh, all sorts of materials. I was generally in charge of smashing and breaking things. And I think that was because I wasn't good enough to be a shop fitter, like my father and my brother. So when I was smashing and breaking up all these things, I would constantly just see shapes and forms and they just really, you know, gave me the inspiration to put these things together and turn them into sculptures and I've been doing so ever since. Generally, it's the materials tend to speak to me and, and build the thing almost uh, by itself. I find like, I'll, uh, you know, a few times I'll have ideas and stuff, but Generally, the, the texture and the feel, uh, I, I get a lot of pleasure out of uh, symmetry and patterns as well as, you know, natural curves and stuff and just like sort of mixing the two together. So my new work is, is based on the same process of uh, just found materials, construction materials and bring them together and see how they work together, uh, the textures and the feel of them and just trying to mold them into something that's uh, bigger than the piece itself, sort of suggesting uh, continuation of patterns and curves and so. Uh, I'm very excited about being in this exhibition with uh, so many talented artists. It's uh, very exciting.